In fairy tales, witches always wear silly black hats and black cloaks, and they ride on broomsticks. But this is not a fairy tale. This is about real witches. Listen very carefully. Never forget what is coming next. Real witches dress in ordinary clothes and look very much like ordinary women. They live in ordinary houses and they work in ordinary jobs. That is why they are so hard to catch. A real witch hates children with a red-hot sizzling hatred that is more sizzling and red-hot than any hatred you could possibly imagine. A real witch spends all her time plotting to get rid of the children in her particular territory. Her mind will always be plotting and scheming and churning and burning and whizzing and fizzing with murderous bloodthirsty thoughts. Which child shall I choose for my next squelching? A real witch gets the same pleasure from squelching a child as you get from eating a plate full of strawberries and thick cream. She reckons on doing away with one child a week. One child a week is uh, 52 a year. Squish them and squiggle them and make them disappear. That is the motto of all witches. As far as children are concerned, a real witch is easily the most dangerous of all the living creatures on Earth. What makes her doubly dangerous is the fact that she doesn't look dangerous. If a tiger were able to make himself look like a large dog with a waggy tail, you would probably go up and pat him on the head, and that would be the end of you. It is the same with witches. They all look and sound like nice ladies. Listen to these two voices. Hello. Are you sitting comfortably? I hope this story isn't scaring you. Well, which was the witch? That is a difficult question, but it is one that every child must try to answer. For all you know, a witch might be living next door to you right now. 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 <laughs> I myself had two separate encounters with witches before I was eight years old. From the first, I escaped unharmed. But on the second occasion, I was not so lucky. Things happened to me that will probably make you scream when you hear about them. The fact that I am still here and able to speak to you is due entirely to my wonderful grandmother. She was Norwegian. The Norwegians know all about witches, for Norway, with its black forests and icy mountains, is where the first witches came from. My parents were also Norwegian, but they lived and worked in England, where I was born and went to school. Twice a year, we visited my grandmother in Norway. This old lady, as far as I could gather, was the only surviving relative we had, and I absolutely adored her. Soon after my seventh birthday, my parents took me as usual to spend Christmas with my grandmother. One terrible afternoon, they were both killed in a car accident, and I finished up back in my grandmother's house with her arms around me tight. What are we going to do now, Grandmama? Oh, you will stay here with me, and I will look after you. Aren't I going back to England? No. Heaven shall take my soul, but Norway shall keep my bones. The next day, in order that we might both try to forget our great sadness, my grandmother started telling me stories. She was apparently a great expert on witches. And my witch stories, unlike the others, are not imaginary tales. They are gospel truth. And what is far worse, those witches are still with us. They're all around us. Are you really being truthful, Grandmama? <laughs> now, listen. I have known no less than five children who have simply vanished off the face of this earth, never to be seen again. The witches took them. Tell me about them. <clears throat> Wait while I light my cigar. <clears throat> <clears throat> Your 
you're the only grandmother I know who smokes cigars. Mm. Very likely. Now, the first child I knew who disappeared was called Ranghild Hansen. She was about eight at the time, and she was playing with her little sister on the lawn. When her mother looked for her, she had gone. She went away with the tall lady in white gloves, the little sister said. She took Ranghild by the hand and led her away. No one ever saw her again. What happened to the other four children? They vanished, just as Ranghild did. In every case, a strange lady was seen outside the house just before it happened. But how did they vanish? The second one was very peculiar. There was a family called Christiansen. They had an oil painting in the living room, which they were very proud of. The painting showed some ducks in the yard outside the farmhouse. One day, their daughter, Solveig, came home from school eating an apple. She said a nice lady had given it to her on the street. The next morning, little Solveig was not in her bed. No one could find her. Then, all of a sudden, her father shouted, There she is! He pointed at the painting. And sure enough, Solveig was in it. She was standing in the farmyard in the act of throwing bread to the ducks. She was part of the painting, just a picture painted on the canvas. Did you ever see that painting, Grandmama? Many times. And the peculiar thing was that little Solveig kept changing her position in the picture. One day she would be looking out at the farmhouse window. Another day she would be outside holding her duck in her arms. Did you ever see her moving in the picture? <laughs> Nobody did. She was always motionless. Just a figure painted in oils. It was all very odd. And what was most odd of all was that as the years went by, she kept growing older in the picture until all at once, 54 years after it all happened, she disappeared from the picture altogether. That's two you've told me about. What happened to the third one? Hmm, the third one was little Birgit Svensson. One day, she started growing feathers all over her body. Within a month, she turned into a large white chicken. She even laid eggs. Her mother made omelettes out of them. them. Delicious they were. But she didn't disappear. No, not Birgit. She lived on for many years laying her brown eggs. You said all of them disappeared. Hmm. I made the mistake. I can't remember everything. What happened to the fourth child? Ah, the fourth was a boy called Harald. He was turned to stone. Real stone? Granite. They still keep him in the house? Hmm? A little stone statue? Visitors leaned their umbrellas up against him. You told me there were five altogether. What happened to the last one? Number five was an interesting case. A nine-year-old boy called Leif was summer holidaying with his family on the fjord. He dived into the water, and his father noticed that he stayed under for an unusually long time, and he came to the surface at last. He wasn't Leif anymore. What was he, Grandmama? He was a porpoise, hmm? as friendly as could be. How did they know that the porpoise was actually Leif? He talked to them. But wasn't there the most tremendous fuss when this happened? Not much. Here in Norway, we are used to that sort of thing. There are witches everywhere. Now, come, it's time you went to bed. Now, come along, I'll tuck you in. And tomorrow evening, I'll tell you more about witches. Tonight, I am going to tell you how to recognize a witch when you see one. Can you always be sure? No, you can't. But you can make a pretty good guess. Be careful with your cigar rush, Grandmama. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want you to catch fire. Oh, oh, never fear, my darling. <laughs> now, a real witch is certain always to be wearing gloves when you meet her. 
Why? Because instead of fingernails, she has long, thin, curvy claws, like a cat. And she wears the gloves to hide them. Mama used to wear gloves. Not in the house. Which is wear gloves even in the house. The second thing to remember is that the real witch is always bold. Bold? Bold as a boiled egg. How horrid. Disgusting. If she's bald, she'll be easy to spot. Not at all. A real witch wears a first-class wig to hide her boldness. So that doesn't help much either. None of these things is any good on its own. It's only when you put them all together that they begin to make a little sense. Mind you, these wigs do cause a rather serious problem for witches. What problem? They make the scalp itch most terribly. It sets up a frightful itch on the bald skin. Wig rash, the witches call it. What other things must I look for to recognise a witch? Look for the nose holes. Witches have slightly larger nose holes than ordinary people. Why? For smelling with. A witch can actually smell out a child who is standing on the other side of the street on a pitch black night. She couldn't smell me. I've just had a bath. Oh, oh, oh yes, she could. The cleaner you happen to be, the more smelly you are to a witch. But that doesn't make sense, Grandmama. Oh, yes, it does. It isn't the dirt the witch is smelling. It is you. The smell that drives a witch mad comes right out of your skin. Stink waves, the witches call them. When you haven't washed for a week and your skin is all covered with dirt, then the stink waves can't come oozing out nearly so strongly. I shall never have a bath again. Mm, just don't have one too often. Once a month is quite enough for a sensible child. Oh, Grandmama, I do love you. <laughs> But if it's a dark night, how can a witch smell the difference between a child and a grown-up? Because grown-ups don't give out stink faves. Only children do that. I'm not giving them out at this very moment, am I? No, not to me you aren't. But to a witch, you would be smelling absolutely disgusting. What would I be smelling of? <clears throat> dogs' droppings. Fresh dogs' droppings. That simply is not true. I know I'm not smelling of dogs dropping, stale or fresh. <laughs> There's no point in arguing about it. If you see a woman holding her nose as she passes you in the street, she could easily be a witch. Tell me what else to look for in a witch. The eyes. Look carefully at the eyes. If she is a witch, the little black dot in the middle of each eye will keep changing colour. You will see fire and you will see ice dancing right in the very centre. It will send shivers running all over your skin. Are there other things? Of course. You don't seem to understand that witches are not actually women at all. They look like women. And they are able to act like women. But in actual fact, they are demons in human shape. What else is different about them? They just have no toes. No toes? Then what do they have? They just have feet with square ends and no toes at all. Does that make it difficult to walk? Not at all. But it does give them a problem with their shoes. A witch has the most awful job squeezing her feet into women's neat pointed shoes. Isn't that terribly uncomfortable? Extremely uncomfortable. Are those the only differences then, Grandmama? Ah, uh, oh, just one more. Their spit is blue. Blue? Blue, as a bilberry. Nobody can have blue spit. <laughs> Witches can. Can you notice the blue spit if a witch is talking to you? Only if you look carefully. But it doesn't show much. It would if she spat. Oh, it just never spit. They don't. So, there you are. That's about all I can tell you. The next day, we heard that my father had left instructions in his will that I should continue to go to school in England. Oh,
Grandmama. You don't want to go and live in our English house. I know you don't. Of course I don't. But I am afraid I must. Your next school term starts in a few days. There are not as many witches in England as there are in Norway. I'm sure I won't meet one. I sincerely hope you won't, because those English witches are probably the most vicious in the whole world. Tell me what those English witches do. Hmm. Their favourite ruse is to mix a powder that will turn a child into some creature that all grown-ups hate. Mm, often it is a slug. Then the grown-ups step on the slug and squish it without knowing it's a child. That's perfectly beastly. Oh, I've known English witches who have turned children into pheasants the very day before the pheasant shooting season. So they get shot? Of course they get shot. Then they are plucked and roasted and eaten for supper. It gives the English witches great pleasure to watch the grown-ups doing away with their own children. I really don't want to go to England, Grandmama. Of course you don't, nor do I. But I am afraid we've got to. Does every single country in the world have its witches? Wherever you find people, you find witches. And do they all know one another? They do not. A witch only knows the witches in her own country. Once a year, the witches of each separate country hold their own secret meeting to receive a lecture from the Grand High Witch of all the world. Where do they hold these meetings? I've heard it said that they just book into an hotel like any other group of women who are holding a meeting. Where does the Grand High Witch live when she's at home? <laughs> Nobody knows. If we knew that, then she could be rooted out and destroyed. Witchophiles all over the world have spent their lives trying to discover the secret headquarters of the Grand High Witch. What is a witchophile, Grandmama? Hmm? Oh, a person who studies witches and knows a lot about them. Are you a witchophile? I am a retired witchophile. I'm too old to be active any longer. But when I was younger, I travelled all over the globe trying to track down the Grand High Witch. I never came even close to succeeding. Is she rich? She's rolling. She has a machine which makes all the money she wants and she dishes it out to witches everywhere. But, Grandmama, if nobody's ever seen the Grand High Witch... How can you be so sure she exists? Nobody has ever seen the devil. But we know he exists. The next morning we sailed for England, and soon I was back in our old family house in Kent, but this time with my grandmother to look after me. At the bottom of the garden there was an enormous conker tree, and Timmy, my best friend, and I built a tree house high up in its branches. One Saturday afternoon I was working on it by myself when I was suddenly aware that I was being watched by a woman immediately below me. She was smiling in a most peculiar way. I have a present for you. Gloves. She's wearing gloves. Come down out of that tree, little boy, and I shall give you the most exciting present you have ever had. It's a snake, a little green snake. It's tame. If you come down here, I shall give him to you. Oh, Grandmama, come and help me. I panicked and shot up that enormous tree like a monkey. I stayed up there for hours and it began to grow dark. At last, I heard my grandmother calling me. It's past supper time. Has that woman gone? What woman? The woman in the black gloves. Has she gone? Yes, she's gone. I look after you. You come down now. My grandmother led me into the house and gave me a cup of hot cocoa. I told her all that had happened. You know what this means? It means that there is a witch in our district. From now on, I'm not letting you walk alone to school. That was my first witch, but it wasn't my last. 
The Easter holidays came and went, and summer term began at school. We were going back to Norway for the summer holiday, but then my grandmother caught pneumonia, and although she got better, the doctor said she was not fit to go on such a long journey. It's too far. It would be very dangerous. But I tell you what you can do. You can take your grandson to a nice hotel on the south coast of England instead. Oh, no. Do you want your grandmother to die? Never. Then don't let her go on a long journey this summer. <coughs> Stop her smoking those vile black cigars. The doctor got his way about the holiday, but not about the cigars. Rooms were booked for us in a place called the Hotel Magnificent in the famous seaside town of Bournemouth. Just before we left for Bournemouth, my grandmother gave me, as a consolation present, two white mice in a cage. And, of course, I took them with me. I named them William and Mary, and in the hotel I set out right away to teach them tricks. On our very first morning at the hotel, the chambermaid saw them. She complained to the manager. We had to go and see him in his office. I cannot permit mice in my hotel, madam. How dare you say that when your rotten hotel is full of rats anyway? Rats? There are no rats in this hotel. You had better get the rat catcher in at once before I report you to the public health authorities. You are not being serious, madam. I was never more serious in my life. Are you, or are you not, going to allow my grandson to keep his white mice in his room? Uh, may I suggest a compromise, madam? Hmm? I will permit him to keep them in his room as long as they are never allowed out of the cage. How's that? That will suit us very well. My grandmother returned to our rooms, well pleased. But it was my intention to continue training my white mice, and you cannot train mice in a cage. I decided to search for a secluded place away from the watchful eyes of the chambermaid, who told me... The first mouse I'll see out of its cage will be drowned in a bucket of water by the old porter. I couldn't risk that. So, with a mouse in each trouser pocket, I wandered through the enormous hotel in search of a secret spot. As I crossed the terrace, I met Bruno Jenkins, a boy who was staying at the hotel with his parents. I didn't care for him. He was one of those boys who is always eating something. Oh, it's you. I bet my father makes more money than your father. I expect he does. Yes, and guess how many cars we've got. I'm not really interested. I bet you are. We've got three. Three cars. So there. What are you doing? I'm roasting these ants with my magnifying glass. Look. See? I focus the sun through the magnifying glass onto the ant, and it all shrivels up. I like watching them burn. That's horrible. Stop doing it. Let's see you stop me. There. Oh, no. Look what you've done. You smashed my magnifying glass. My father's going to get you for this. He ran off, presumably to find his wealthy father. I continued my search. The ground floor of the hotel was a maze of public rooms. None of them was empty. At last, I came to the ballroom. There was a notice on the door. This room is reserved for the annual meeting of the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. But there's nobody here. The meeting must be over. I can go and hide behind that big screen at the back of the room and nobody will ever see me. What a splendid place this is. Nice thick green carpet, ideal for mouse training. Out you come, mice. Let's see how well you walk along this piece of string. This way, ladies. Oh, no. It's the hotel manager. The meeting isn't over. It's just beginning. I'll just have to stay here and hope nobody finds me. Well, ladies, I'm sure you will be quite comfortable in here. If there's anything we can do for you, do not hesitate to let me know. 
Good. The manager's gone. I should be all right with these kind ladies. Perhaps I should suggest that they come and do a bit of cruelty to children prevention at my school. I can see them quite well through this crack in the screen. There must be about 200 of them. Gosh, look at that lady scratching the back of her head. I'm sure she'd be embarrassed if she knew I'm watching. Wait a minute, they're all scratching their heads. They must have got knits. No, they're wearing wigs. They're all wearing wigs and gloves. I must get out of here. Oh no, they're chaining the doors. Nobody can get in or out. My blood turned to ice. One false move, one cough, one sneeze, one nose blow, one little sound of any sort, and it wouldn't be one witch that got me. It would be two hundred. I peered through the crack in the screen. All the women, or rather the witches, were now sitting motionless, staring at somebody who had suddenly appeared on the platform. She was tiny, probably no more than four and a half feet tall, about 25 or 6, and very pretty. She had on a long black dress, and she wore black gloves that came up to her elbows. She didn't look like a witch at all. Then very slowly, she raised her hands to her face. I saw her gloved fingers unhooking something behind her ears, and then she lifted her face clean away. It was a mask. The face underneath the mask was a fearsome and ghastly sight. There was something terribly wrong with it. Something foul and putrid and decayed. I could see the skin all cankered and worm-eaten, as though maggots were working away in there. I knew immediately that this was none other than the Grand High Witch herself. Are the doors chained and bolted? The doors are chained and bolted, your grandness! You may remove your gloves. They've all got long claws, like Grandmother said. You may remove your shoes. Oh, they've got no toes. It's revolting. It looks as if the toes have been cut off with a carving knife. You may remove your wigs and get some fresh air onto your spotty scalps. Oh, heavens! Oh, help! Oh, Lord, have mercy on me! These foul, bald-headed females are child killers! Every one of them, and I can't escape! Will they be able to smell me? When did I last have a bath? I don't think I've had one since I've been here. Perhaps I've got a chance after all. My hands are filthy. The stink waves can't possibly get out through all this dirt. Witches of Inkland! Miserable witches! Useless, lazy witches. You are a heap of idle, good-for-nothing worms. I am having my breakfast this morning, and I am looking out of the window at the beach, and what am I seeing? I am seeing thousands of rotten, repulsive little children playing on the sands. Why have you not got rid of them, these filthy, smelly children? I am asking you why! Children think out the world. We do not want these children around here. One child a week is no good to me. Is that the best you can do? Better is no good either. My orders are that every single child in this country shall be rubbed out, squashed, squirted, squitted, and frittered before I come here again in one year's time. All of them? can't possibly wipe out all of them. Who dares to argue with me? It was you, was it not? Ah, uh, I didn't mean it, your grandfather. You dare to argue with me? Ah, uh, I was just uh, uh, talking to myself. I swear it, your grandness. A stupid witch who answers back must burn until her bones are black. No, no! A foolish witch without a brain must sizzle in the fiery flame. Uh, an idiotic witch like you must roast upon the barbecue. Oh, forgive me, oh, your grandness, I didn't mean it. A witch who dares to say I'm wrong will not be with us very long. <laughs> Frizzled like a fritter, <laughs> cooked like a carrot, you will never see her again. Now we can get down to business. 
children are revolting. We will wipe them all away. We will flush them down the drain. Yes, yes, yes. Wipe them away. Flush yes, them down the drain. Children are foul and filthy. They are. They are. Children are dirty and stinky. Dirty and stinky. Children are smelling of dogs' droppings. <laughs> than dog's droppings. So now I am having a plan for getting rid of every single child in the hall of Inkland. Yes, we shall swish them and swallow up them and we shall make them to disappear every single smelly little brat in Inkland in one stroke. <laughs> oh, shut up and listen. Each. And every one of you is to go back to your hometowns immediately and resign from your jobs. We will! We will! And then you will be going out and you will be buying sweet shops. You will be having no trouble in getting what you want because you will be offering four times as much as the shop is worth. I have brought with me six trunks stuffed full of English banknotes, all of them homemade. <laughs> Each of you is owning a magnificent sweet shop. The next move is that each of you will be announcing in the window of your shop that on a certain day you will be having a great gala opening with free sweets and shocks to every child. Oh, that'll bring them in, the greedy little brutes. They'll be fighting to get through the door. Next! You will prepare yourselves for this great gala opening by filling every chalk and every sweet in your shop with my very latest and greatest magic formula. This is known as Formula 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker. Delayed Action Mouse Maker? She's done it again! Her greatness has concocted yet another of her wondrous magic child killers! How do we make it, oh brilliant one? Exercise patience. First, I am explaining to you how my Formula 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker is working. Listen carefully. We are the Laid Action Mouse Maker is a green liquid, and one droplet in each chalk or sweet will be quite enough. So here is what happens. Child eats chalk, which has in it the Laid Action Mouse Maker liquid. Child goes home feeling fine. Child goes to bed still feeling fine. Child wakes up in the morning still feeling fine. Formula, you understand, is delayed action and is not working yet. We understand, the brainy one. But when does it start working? Yes, it, yes. It, it is starting to work at exactly nine o'clock when the child is arriving at school. Child arrives at school. Delayed action mouse maker immediately starts to work. Child starts to shrink. Child is starting to grow fur. Child is starting to grow tail. All is happening in precisely 26 seconds. After 26 seconds, child is not a child any longer. It is a mouse! A mouse! <laughs> Classrooms will all be swarming with mice. Chaos and pandemonium will be in every school in Inkland. Teachers will be hopping up and down. Women teachers will be standing on desks and holding up skirts and yelling, Help! 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 And what is happening next in every school? <laughs> mouse traps! <laughs> All over school, mouse traps is going snappity snap and mouse heads is rolling across the floor like marbles. All over Inkland, in every school in Inkland, noise of Snapping mouse traps will be heard. <laughs> Down with children, do them in, boil their bones and fry their skin. Pish them, squish them, bash them, mash them, break them, shake them, slash them, smash them. Offer chunks with magic powder, say eat up, then say it louder. Cram them full of sticky eats, send them home still gosling sweets. And 
In the morning, little fools go marching off to separate schools. A girl feels sick and goes all pale. She yells, hey, look, I've grown a tail. A boy who's standing next to her screams, ah, I think I'm growing fur. Another shouts, oh, we look like freaks. There's whiskers growing on our cheeks. A boy who was extremely tall cries out, what's wrong? I'm growing small. Four tiny legs begin to sprout from air. Everybody round about, and all at once, all in a trice, there are no children, only mice. In every school is mice galore, all running around the schoolroom floor, and all the poor demented teachers is yelling, "Hey, who are these creatures?" They stand upon the desks and shout. Get out, you filthy mice! Get out! Let someone fetch some mouse traps, please! And don't forget to bring the cheese. <laughs> now mouse traps come, and every trap goes snippy snip and snappy snap. The mouse traps have a powerful spring. The springs go crack and snap and ping. Oh, it's lovely noise for us to hear. Is music to a bitch's ear? Dead mice in every place around, piled two feet deep upon the ground. With teachers searching left and right, but not a single child in sight. The teachers cry, what's going on? Oh, where have all the children gone? It's half past nine, and as a rule, they're never late as this for school. Poor teachers don't know what to do. Some sit and read, and just a few amuse themselves throughout the day by sleeping all the mice away. And all the stitches shout, Hooray! I hope you haven't forgotten that while all this was going on, I was still stuck behind the screen with one eye glued to the crack. I was in constant terror that one of the witches in the back row was going to get a whiff of my presence through those special nose holes of hers. But the witches seemed to be thinking of nothing except the Grand High Witch and her great plan for wiping out the children of England. to do with me. These mice are pet mice, obviously belonging to some repellent child in the hotel. A boy it will be, because girls are not keeping pet mice. A boy, a filthy, smelly little boy! You know perfectly well you must do nothing to draw attention to yourselves while you are living in this hotel. They're talking about He is not important. I shall smell him out and turn him into a mackerel and have him dished up for supper. Now, pay attention. I will now give you the recipe for concocting Formula 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker. Get out pencils and paper. First, you have to make the child small very quickly. So you take the wrong end of a telescope and you boil it until it gets soft. And while this is going on, you take exactly 45 brown mice and you cut off their tails with a carving knife and you fry the tails in hair oil until they are nice and crisp. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. What do we do with all those mice who had their tails cut off? Oh, yeah. You simmer them in frog juice for one hour. Now, we need something that will have a delayed action result so the recipe will not start working until nine o'clock the next day. Tell us the great secret! Here is what you do. You set your alarm clock to go off at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Then you roast it in the oven until it is crisp and tender. Are you writing this down? <laughs> Next, you take your boiled telescope and your fried mouse tails and your cooked mice and your roasted alarm clock, and all together you put them into the mixer. 
Then add to it the yolk of a gruntle's egg. I'm getting a bit old to go bird nesting. Those ruddy gruntles always nest very high. Then you also mix in the claw of a crab cruncher, the beak of a blabber snatch, the snout of a grubble squirt, and the tongue of a cat springer. I trust you're not having any trouble finding those. <laughs> When you have mixed everything together in the mixer, you will have a most marvelous looking green liquid. Put one drop into a sweet, and at nine o'clock the next morning, the child who ate it will turn into a mouse in 26 seconds. About one word of warning. Never increase the dose. And never give more than one sweet to each child. An overdose of delayed action mouse maker will mess up the timing of the alarm clock and cause the child to turn into a mouse too early. A large overdose might even have an instant effect, and you wouldn't want that, would you? You wouldn't want the children turning into mice right there in your sweet shops. That would give the game away. So be very careful. Do not overdose. Oh, yes! Yes! I am now going to prove to you that this recipe is working to perfection. You understand that you can set the alarm clock to go off at any time you like. So yesterday I am personally preparing a small quantity of the magic formula to give you a public demonstration. But I have set the alarm to go off at half past three this afternoon, and that is in precisely seven minutes' time. So what am I doing yesterday with this magic liquid? I will tell you what I am doing. I am putting one droplet onto a very squishy chocolate bar, and I am giving this bar to a repulsive, smelly little boy who is hanging around the lobby of this hotel. And I said to him... Would you like some more? And he said, yes. So I said, I will give you six bars if you will meet me in the ballroom of this hotel at 25 past three tomorrow afternoon. Six bars, cried the greedy little swine. I'll be there. And if I am not mistaken, that is him banging on the door. Quick, put on your wigs, put on your gloves, put on your shoes, and I will replace my pretty face. Now, remove the chains from the door and let the greedy, smelly creature in. Why, hello, little man. How lovely to see you. It's that awful boy, Bruno. I've come to collect my chocolate bars. Dish them out. Darling boy, I have them all ready for you. Come up here onto the platform. Okay, where are my six bars of chocolates? The time is 30 seconds before half past three. What the heck's going on? 20 seconds. Give me my chocolate. 10 seconds. Give me the chocolate and let me get out of here. Three, two, one. We have ignition. <laughs> This horrid little louse will very soon become a lovely little mouse! He's turned into a mouse! They've turned Bruno into a mouse! She's done it! It's fantastic! It's colossal! You are a miracle, old brainy one! Now for the mouse trap! I want to squelch him and chop off his head. Oh, no. I don't want to see this. Bruno Jenkins may have been a bit of a stinker, but I don't want to watch him having his head chopped off. Where has that mouse got to? He scampered off into a corner. Oh, he's got like a hole. hole. It matters not. Silence and sit down. All those over 70, put up your hands. 
There are seven of you. Very good. It comes to me that you ancient ones will not be able to climb high trees in search of Gruntle's eggs. We won't, your grandmother. We won't. You ancient ones have served me well over many years, and I do not wish to deny you the pleasure of bumping off a few thousand children each just because you had become old and feeble. Oh. I have therefore prepared personally with my own hands a limited quantity of delayed action mouse maker, which I will distribute to the ancient ones before you leave the hotel. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Oh, you're far too good to wish you. Right, Here you. is a sample of what I am giving you. In this tiny bottle is 500 doses of mouse maker. Is enough to turn 500 children into mice. <laughs> Each of you ancient ones will get two of these bottles. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Good. Our meeting is over. Now we must go out on the sun terrace and have tea with that ridiculous manager. Next, at six o'clock tonight, those witches who are too old to climb trees after Gruntle's eggs will report to my room to receive two bottles each of Mouse Maker. My room number is 454. Then, at eight o'clock, all of you will assemble in the dining room for supper. We are the lovely ladies of the RSPCC, and they are setting up two long tables specially for us. But do not forget to put the cotton plugs up your noses. That dining room will be full of filthy little children. Any questions? Um, what happens if one of the chocolates we're giving away in our shops gets eaten by a grown-up? That's just too bad for the grown-up. This meeting is over. Out you go. Wait! Hold everything! What, what is, is it? it? Dog stoppings. <gasps> just then, I got a whiff of dog stoppings. Oh, you oh, no. Yes! Yes! Oh, there it is again! Oh, it is definitely somewhere. Not too far away. What's going on down there? Uh, Mildred's just got a whiff of dog's droppings. What rubbish this is. There are no children in this room. Hang on. Hang on, I'm getting it again. It's getting stronger. Can't the rest of you smell it? <laughs> oh, she's right. She's absolutely right. Dog's droppings, it is. Strong and strong. <laughs> your noses till you get it. It must be exterminated immediately! There's no escape for me now. Even if I make a run for it and manage to dodge the lot of them, I still won't get out because the doors are chained and locked. I'm finished. I'm done for. Oh, Grandmama, what are they going to do to me now? It's behind this screen! Seize it and bring it up here to me! Help! Help! the spying little worm up here to me. That's it. Hold him tight. Now for a little medicine. Hold his nose to make him open his mouth. <coughs> the Grand High Witch poured the entire contents of the little bottle of Mouse Maker down my throat. Oh, the pain and the fire. I screamed, but a gloved hand was clapped over my lips. The next thing I felt was my skin beginning to tighten. I felt as though I was a balloon and somebody was twisting the top of the balloon and the balloon was getting smaller and smaller and the skin was getting tighter and tighter and soon it was going to burst. Then the squeezing began. This time I was in a suit of iron and somebody was turning a screw and I was squeezed like an orange into a pulpy mess with the juice running out of my sides. Then there came a fierce prickling sensation all over what was left of my skin, as though tiny needles were forcing their way out. The mouse fur was growing. Far away in the distance I heard the Grand Witch yelling. A boy 
any longer. I'm a mouse. Now for the mouse trap. I wasn't going to wait for that. I was off across the platform like a streak of lightning. I was a swift and silent mover. And quite amazingly, the pain had all gone now. I was feeling quite remarkably well. It's not a bad thing after all to be tiny as well as speedy when there's a bunch of dangerous females after your blood. Now if I just squeeze up against this chair leg, maybe they won't find me. Leave the little stink pot alone. It's only a mouse now. Somebody else will soon catch it. The meeting is over. Unlock the doors and shove off to the Sunshine Terrace to have tea with that idiotic manager. They've gone. Thank goodness for that. I wonder if Bruno is still around here. Bruno! That's marvellous. I can still talk in my human voice. Bruno Jenkins, where are you? If you can hear me, give a shout. I wonder where he is. It's not so bad being a mouse. I rather like it. What's so wonderful about being a little boy anyway? I know that mice get hunted and caught in traps sometimes, but little boys sometimes get run over by motor cars. Little boys have to go to school. Mice don't. Mice don't have to pass exams. Mice have only two enemies, humans and cats. My grandmother's a human, but I know for certain that she will always love me, whoever I am. And she never keeps a cat. When mice grow up, they don't ever have to go to war and fight against other mice. I'm pretty sure all mice like each other. People don't. I don't think it's at all a bad thing to be a mouse. And there's a mouse nibbling a piece of bread. It must be Bruno. Hello, Bruno. Hello. What have you found? One of them dropped it. It's a fish paste sandwich. Pretty good. Listen, Bruno, now that we are both mice, I think we ought to start thinking a bit about the future. What do you mean, we? The fact that you're a mouse has nothing to do with me. But you're a mouse too, Bruno. Don't be a fool. I'm not a mouse. I have to inform you that not very long ago the witches turned you into a mouse. Then they did it to me. You're lying. I'm not a mouse. If you hadn't been so busy guzzling that sandwich, you would have noticed your hairy paws. Take a look at them. Good grief! I am a mouse! You wait till my father hears about this! He may think it's an improvement. I don't want to be a mouse! There are worse things than being a mouse. You can creep into the larder at night. You can stay there all night eating yourself silly. That's what mice do. Now that is a thought. You say a witch did this to me. Which witch? The one who gave you the chocolate bar yesterday. The filthy old cow. I'll get her for this. Who is she? Forget it. You don't have a hope. But how are your parents going to take this? I think my father is going to be a bit put out. And your mother? She's terrified of mice. Then you've got a problem, haven't you? Why only me? What about you? My grandmother will understand perfectly. She knows all about witches. I suggest that we go and consult her. She'll know exactly what to do. Now follow me. Don't talk and don't let anybody see you. Don't forget just about anyone who catches sight of you will try to kill you. We made our way to the fifth floor. It was quite a climb, but we met nobody because they were all using the lift. We came to the door of my grandmother's room. Here we are. How do you know this is the right room? Can't see the number on the door from down here. I recognise this pair of shoes. What do we do now? We can't open the door. Look out. Here comes the chambermaid. She doesn't approve of mice. Quick, hide in these shoes. Oh, dear. More shoes to be cleaned. Oh, I'd better pick them up, I suppose. Ow! Oh, there's something alive inside them. Ow! It's bit me. Oh! What on earth is going on out here? Your shoe bit! Come on, Bruno, get inside the room while the door is open. I'm right behind you. The girl is mad. Close the door, Grandmama, quickly. That awful maid might come in. Oh, 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 no. Oh, what has happened to you? Don't cry, Grandmama. Oh. Things could be a lot worse. Oh, oh. I did get away from them. I'm still alive. So is Bruno. <gasps> oh, let me look at you both. 
I just pick you up and put you on the table. There. Oh, great! A bowl of bananas. Yum, yum. Oh, 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 my poor sweet darling. What have they done to you? I know what they've done, Grandmama, and I know what I am. But the funny thing is, I don't feel especially bad about it. In fact, I feel rather good. I'll be quite all right as long as there's always you to look after me. Of course, I'll look after you. Who's the other one? That was a boy called Bruno Jenkins. They got him first. Oh, oh, oh dear! I must have a cigar <laughs> to calm me down. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's better. Now, where is the witch now? Is she in the hotel? It wasn't just one; it was hundreds. Oh, they're right here in the hotel this very moment. You don't mean they're holding the annual meeting here? They've held it, Grandmama. I heard it all—all all of them, including the Grand Witch herself, are having tea with the manager. Tell me everything, right from the beginning. Well, I was looking for a place to do some mouse training. And the idea of the mouse maker formula is to turn all the children of England into mice and destroy them in traps. Mm -hmm. I knew it. I knew they were brewing up something tremendous. We've got to stop them. You can't stop witches. Just look at the power that terrible Grand High Witch has in her eyes alone. You saw it yourself. Look what happened to you already. And Bruno. Yes, and Bruno. He doesn't seem very worried. He's on his second banana already. Does he never stop eating? Never. Can you explain something to me, Grandmama? I'll try, my darling. The thing I don't understand is how Bruno and I are still able to talk and think just as we did before. It's quite simple. All they've done is to shrink you and give you four legs and a furry coat, but they haven't been able to change you into one hundred percent mouse. You are still yourself in everything except your appearance. You've still got your own mind and your own brain and your own voice, and thank goodness for that. So I'm not really an ordinary mouse at all. I'm a sort of mouse person. Quite right. You are human in mouse's clothing, Grandmama. I may have a bit of an idea. Yes, my darling. What is it? The Grand High Witch told them that her room was four five four. Now my room is five five four. Mine five five four is on the fifth floor, so hers four five four will be on the fourth floor. That is correct. Then don't you think that room four five four is directly underneath room? Five five four. It's bound to be. These modern hotels are built like boxes of bricks. Would you please take me out onto my balcony so I can look down? All the rooms in the Hotel Magnificent had small private balconies. My grandmother carried me through into my own bedroom and out onto my balcony. We both peered down to the balcony immediately below. I'll bet I could climb down there somehow and get in. And get caught all over again? I won't allow it. All the witches are having tea with the manager. The Grand High Witch won't be back until six o'clock or just before. That's when she's going to dish out the supplies of that foul formula to the ancient ones, who are too old to climb the trees after the Gruntles' eggs. And if you did manage to get into her room, what then? I'd try to steal one bottle of her delayed action mouse maker and bring it back here. Could you carry it? I think so. It's a very small bottle. I'm frightened of that stuff. What would you do with it if you did manage to get it? One bottle is enough for five hundred people. That would give each and every witch down there a double dose at least. We could turn them all into mice. Oh, what an idea! It's fantastic. You're a genius, my darling. Wouldn't that be something? Well. That's her balcony down there, and what's more, the door from her balcony into her bedroom is wide open. How are you going to climb down? I don't know. If I fell, I'd be a goner. Um, I've got it. Now, where did I put it? Oh, yes, here it is. 
the sock I've been knitting for you, it's half finished. If you get into the sock, I can lower you down on the ball of wool. But we must hurry. Any moment that monster will be returning to her room. Um, there. there you are. In you go, into the sock. I hope I can manage this. I'm only a little mouse. Oh, you'll manage. Are you all right? Yes, I can see through the stitches. It does look a long way down. Good luck, my darling. Here we go. I'm starting to lower you now. That's it. No, don't look down, my darling. You're nearly there. Here we go. Gently does it. You're, you're down. Now, hurry. Hurry, I search the room. Pooh. This room stinks of the stench of witches. But it looks just like an ordinary room. What's that? Oh, it's just a frog hopping under the bed. Hurry up! Grab this stuff and get out! If the Grand High Witch wanted to hide something top secret, where would she put it? Somewhere unusual. What about under the mattress? If I push forward hard, I can squeeze myself underneath it. Ugh. Uh, uh. What's that? I can feel something hard inside the mattress above me. What is it? It feels like a little bottle. It is a bottle. And here's another. And another. The Grand High Witch must have slit open the mattress and put all the bottles inside and then sewn it up again. Thank goodness for a mousy sharp teeth. I'll bite through the mattress cover and get hold of the bottle. Ah, 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 that's it. I've done it. Now I'll roll it off the bed onto the carpet. There. Good job it didn't break. Now let's jump down and have a look at it. Ah, oh, yes, it's identical to the one the Grand High Witch had in the ballroom. And it's got a label on it. Formula 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker. This bottle contains 500 doses. Eureka! Hello. There's three more frogs looking at me. I bet they were children once. Who are you? There's the door. The Grand High Witch is coming back. I must hide. But where? Behind the bedpost, with the bottle, just in time. So there you are, my little froggies. You can stay under the bed tonight. Then I shall throw you out of the window and the seagulls can have you for supper. Hurry up, my darling. You'd better come out quickly. Who is calling? Who is this looking down on my balcony? What is this knitting wool doing hanging down here? Oh, hello. I just dropped my knitting over the balcony by mistake. But it's all right. I've got hold of one end of it. Who were you talking to just now? I was talking to my little grandson. He's been in the bathroom for hours. And it's time he came out. Uh, do you have any children, my dear? I do not. Oh, cripes. She's come back in and slammed the balcony door. How shall I get out now? What is it this time? It is we, ancient ones. It is six o'clock and we have come to collect the bottles that you promised us. Oh, your grandness. Uh, come in, come in. Do not stand out there dithering in the corridor. I don't have all night. Now's my chance. I jumped out from behind the bedpost and ran like lightning towards the open door. In three seconds, I was out in the corridor, still clutching the precious bottle to my chest. I climbed to the fifth floor and ran along the corridor until I came to the door of my own bedroom. Thank goodness there was no one in sight. I tapped on the door with the bottle. Grandmama, it's me. Let me in. I've done it. I've got it, Grandmama. Look, here it is. I've got a whole bottle of it. Oh, my darling, you brilliant boy. You're a wonder. You're a marvel. It was all a bit hairy. I wouldn't want to do it again. Oh, my darling, I thought I'd never see you again. I'm so happy you got away. Let's go back into my room and think about what to do next. What time are those witches having supper in the dining room? Eight o'clock. Hmm. It is now ten past six. We've got until eight o'clock 
to work out our next move. There, I'll put you down on the table and I'll put this precious bottle by the fruit bowl. Hello, this is your friend Bruno. Are you still eating? This is only my fourth banana. That is quite enough. Out you come, out of that bowl. I think it's about time we returned you to the bosom of your family. I shall put you both in my handbag. <laughs> now keep quiet and stay out of sight. I shall leave the clasp undone. But if you must peep, don't show more than your nose. Hey, give me the rest of that banana I was eating. Oh, all right, anything to keep you quiet. We went down in the lift to the ground floor and made our way to the lounge. And there sat Mr and Mrs Jenkins in a couple of armchairs with a low, round, glass-covered table between them. Only my nose and eyes were above the clasp of my grandmother's handbag, but I had a super view. Are you Mr and Mrs Jenkins? Yes. What can I do for you, madam? <clears throat> I'm afraid I have some rather alarming news for you. It's about your son, Bruno. What about Bruno? What's the little blight I've been up to now? Raiding the kitchen, I suppose? It's a bit worse than that. Do you think we might go somewhere more private? Well, I'll tell you about it. Private? Why do we have to be private? It is not an easy thing to explain. I'd much rather we all went up to your room. I don't want to go up to my room, madam. I'm quite comfortable here. Thank you very much. Kindly state your business and then leave us alone. We really can't talk in here. There are too many people. This is a rather delicate and um, <clears throat> personal matter. I'll talk when I dash well want to, madam. Come on, out with it. If Bruno has broken a window or smashed your spectacles, then I'll pay for the damage. But I'm not budging out of this seat. Why is Bruno, anyway? Tell him to come here and see me. He's here already. He's in my handbag. What the heck do you mean he's in your handbag? Are you trying to be funny? There's nothing funny about this. Your son has suffered a rather unfortunate mishap. Oh, he's always suffering mishaps. He suffers from overeating and then he suffers from wind. Oh, you should hear him after supper. Sounds like a brass band. Where is the little beggar? I've already told you. He's in my handbag. The woman's mad. Tell her to go away. The plain fact is that your son Bruno has been rather <clears throat> drastically altered. Altered? What the devil do you mean, altered? Go away. You're a silly old woman. I am trying to tell you as gently as possibly that Bruno really is in my handbag. My own grandson actually saw them doing it to him. Saw who doing what to him, for heaven's sake? Saw the witches turning him into a mouse. <laughs> Call the manager, dear. Have this mad woman thrown out of the hotel. Very well. I can keep patient no longer. Here, it's your son. There. I put him on the table. It's a mouse! Ah, I'll take it away! I can't stand the things! It's Bruno! You nasty Cheeky old woman, get out of here. How dare you frighten my wife like that? Take your filthy mouth away this instant. Well, I did my best. My grandmother turned and sailed out of the room carrying Bruno with her. When we got back to her room, she took both me and Bruno out of her handbag and put us on the table. Why on earth didn't you speak up and tell your father who you were, Bruno? Because I had my mouth full. Oh, what a very disagreeable little boy you are. Not boy, mouse. Quite right, my darling. But we don't have time to, to worry about him at this moment. We have plans to make. In about half an hour's time, all the witches will be going down to supper in the dining room, right? Right. And every one of them has to be given a dose of mouse maker. How on earth are we going to do that? I think you're forgetting that a mouse can go places where human beings can't. That's quite right, but even a mouse can't go creeping around on the tabletop carrying a bottle and sprinkling mouse maker all over the witch's roast beef without being spotted. I wasn't thinking of doing it in the dining room. Then where? In the kitchen, while their food is being got ready. Oh, my darling child, I do believe that turning you into a mouse has doubled your brain power. 
At half past seven, I shall go down to the dining room for supper with you in my handbag. I shall then release you under the table with the precious bottle, and from then on, you'll be on your own. You will have to work your way unseen across the dining room to the door that leads to the kitchen. And whatever happens, you mustn't let them catch you. Soon it was half past seven, and my grandmother set off for the dining room with us mice in her handbag. Good luck, my darling, and don't forget, you have a tail. I must say that never occurred to me. It is rather grand, isn't it? I only mention it because it might come in useful when you're climbing about in the kitchen. You can curl it around, and you can hook it onto things, and you can swing from it and lower yourself to the ground from high places. I wish I'd known this before. I could have practiced using it. Too late now. We got to go. When my grandmother was seated at her table in the dining room, she hid me under the napkin on her lap. Then she pretended to drop something. She bent down and slid me out from under the napkin onto the floor under the table. Go, darling, go. I ran. Oh, how I ran! I waited by the kitchen door until a waiter opened it, and I nipped in after him. Not far above my head, there was a handle sticking out of a garbage bin. Still clutching the bottle, I gave a leap. Turned a somersault in the air and caught hold of the handle with the end of my tail. It was terrific. This is how a trapeze artist in the circus must feel as he goes swishing through the air, high up in the circus tent. Perhaps I shall become a circus mouse after all. Then the waiter who was serving at the witch's table came into the kitchen. All the women in the big arena, please sit for they want a soup. Right, sir. Put the soup for the big party. In the large silver soup train. So that's where the witch's soup is going to be put. So that is where the stuff in my little bottle must go as well. If only I could climb up onto the shelf, I would be directly above the silver basin. But how can I reach it? I know. If I swing backwards and forwards from my tail, if I swing high enough and then let go, I should fly through the air and land on the shelf. Here goes. Whee! I've made it. Now I can pour this mouse maker liquid straight into the silver basin below me. Here we are. Pour all the soup into the silver basin. Now take it into the dining room and serve it. I've done it. The witches are going to get the mouse maker, and I must get back to Grandma's handbag. Look, a mouse! Ah! A dirty little mouse! Take that! Ah! He threw a carving knife at me, and he's cut my tail. I'm falling! Oh, it's a mouse! Hey, hey, hey! 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 Hey, hey, Oh, 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 holy smoke! He's it, it, going all the way up! Oh, he's going right up my leg! He's saying, ah, ah, help! Help! He, he, he's in my knickers! Hey, somebody help me to get it out! Take any trousers off, you silly slob! We're the only pants that we soon get him! <laughs> oh, there, there! No, 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 get him out! But please, before he bites me! There's no mice in there, you silly twerp! The wash! I, I swear, the wash! But I'd escaped through the kitchen door and across the floor of the dining room to my grandmother's table. My tail was hurting terribly. I curled it round so as to look at it. About two inches of it were missing, and it was bleeding quite a lot. It was lovely to see my grandmother's feet again. I shinned up one of her legs and landed in her lap. Hello, Grandmama. I'm back. I did it. I poured it all into their soup. Well done, you.、Oh. But you're bleeding. What happened to you? One of the cooks cut off my tail with a carving knife. It hurts like billio. Oh, you poor little thing! I'm going to bandage it up with my handkerchief. That will stop the bleeding. There. Now I'm going to pop you into my handbag on the empty chair beside me. Oh, you can peep out as long as you're careful not to be seen. Bruno is there as well. But take no notice of him. 
I gave him a roll to eat, and that's keeping him busy. Look out, Grandmama. Here comes Bruno's father. Where is that grandson of yours? My guess is that he and my son Bruno are up to some devilment. Bruno hasn't turned up for his supper, and it takes a lot to make that boy miss his food. <laughs> I must admit, he has a very healthy appetite. My feeling is that you're in on this as well. You played a nasty trick on me and my wife this afternoon. That was no trick. That mouse I tried to give you was your own little boy, Bruno. You'd refuse to take him in. What the blazes do you mean, madam? My son isn't a mouse. Where is he? Out with it. Bruno is a mouse. He most certainly is not a mouse. Oh, yes, I am. What? Hello, Dad. Don't worry. It's not as bad as all that. Just so long as the cat doesn't get me. Bruno! No more school. No more homework. I shall live in the kitchen cupboard and feast on raisins and honey. But Bruno, how, how, how did this happen? Witches. The witches did it. I can't have a mouse for a son. Oh, you got one. Be nice to him, Mr. Jenkins. Mrs. Jenkins will go crazy. She can't stand the things. She'll just have to get used to him. I hope you don't keep a cat in the house. We do, we do. Topsy is my wife's favourite creature. Then you'll just have to get rid of Topsy. By the way, would you like to know who did this to him? Who? Who did it? That one over there, the small one in the black dress at the head of the long table. She's RSPCC. She's the chairwoman. No, she's not. She's the Grand High Witch of all the world. You mean she did it? Why, Dad, I'll have my lawyers onto her for this. I'll make her pay through the nose. Oh, I, 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 I wouldn't do anything rash. That woman has magic powers. She might decide to turn you into something. A cockroach, perhaps. Turn me into a cockroach? Oh, I'd like to see her try. Ah! What on earth happening, Grandmama? Wait, keep quiet and watch. Grandmama, the witches are shrinking, just like I did. I know they are. It's the mouse maker. Look, some of them are growing fur on their faces. Why is it working so quickly? Because all of them have had massive overdoses, just like you. It's thrown the alarm clock right out of whack. Everyone in the dining room was standing up now to get a better view. People were beginning to crowd round the witches' long tables. My grandmother lifted Bruno and me up so that we wouldn't miss any of the fun. In another few seconds, all the witches had disappeared and the tops of the two long tables were covered with small brown mice. It's crazy! This can't happen! Well, let's get the heck out of here, quick! You're right! Mice! Mice! We must get rid of the mice! Wash them flat! It's time to go. Our work is done. Climb onto my hands, both of you. <laughs> Bruno, the time has come to restore you to the bosom of your family. My mum's not very crazy about mice. <laughs> so I noticed. She'll have to get used to you, won't she? Help! 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 Get me out of here! Ah, oh, there is your mother. I'd recognise her voice anywhere. Your little boy, Mrs. Jenkins. He needs to go on a diet. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mum. My grandmother, with me in her hand, marched out of the room and out through the front entrance of the hotel into the open air. Are we going home? Yes, back to Norway. Hooray, 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 hooray. <laughs> I thought you'd like that. Drive us to the station, please. Yes, ma'am. Right away.
It was lovely to be back in Norway once again, but now that I was so small, everything looked different, and it took me quite a while to find my way around. Can I ask you something, Grandmama? Ask me anything you like, my darling. How long does a mouse live? Ah, I've been waiting for you to ask me that. Well, how long do we live, us mice? If you really want to know, I'm afraid a mouse doesn't live for a very long time. How long? Well, an ordinary mouse only lives for about three years. But you are not an ordinary mouse. You are a mouse person, and that is a very different matter. How different? How long does a mouse person live, Grandmama? <laughs> longer, much longer. How much longer? A mouse person will almost certainly live for three times as long as an ordinary mouse. About nine years. Good. That's great. It's the best news I've ever had. Why do you say that? Because I would never want to live longer than you. I couldn't stand being looked after by anybody else. How old are you, Grandmama? I'm eighty-six. Will you live another eight or nine years? It's a bit of luck. You've got to, because by then I'll be a very old mouse, and you'll be a very old grandmother, and soon after that we'll both die together. That would be perfect. I feel older already. I can hear my voice sounding older as I speak. I've noticed that. Now that we've done away with the Grand High Witch, will all the other witches in the world gradually disappear? I'm quite sure they won't. But if she's not there, how are they going to get all the money they need? When a queen bee dies, there is always another queen in the hive ready to take her place. It's the same with witches. Oh no! Well, that means everything we did was for nothing. Have I become a mouse for nothing at all? We saved the children of England. Why are you smiling, Grandmama? <laughs> I have some rather interesting news for you. What news? As soon as we arrived back in Norway, I made a telephone call to England. Who in England? To the chief of police in Bournemouth. I told him I was the chief of police for the whole of Norway, and that I was interested in the peculiar happenings that had taken place recently in the Hotel Magnificent. So, what did you ask him? I asked him for the name and address of the lady who had been living in room four five four in the Hotel Magnificent, the one who disappeared. You mean the Grand High Witch? Yes, my darling. And did he give it to you? Naturally, he gave it to me. One policeman will always help another policeman. But surely the Grand High Witch wouldn't use her real name and address. Why ever not? Nobody in the world had the faintest idea who she was, except the other witches. Even in the village where she lived, people knew her as a kindly and very wealthy baroness who gave large sums of money to charity. I've checked up on that. And that address you got, Grandmama. Must have been the secret headquarters of the Grand High Witch. It still is. Where is it? Tell me quick. Where is it? It is a castle, and the fascinating thing is that in that castle will be all the names and addresses of all the witches in the world. Now, where is the castle, Grandmama? Which country? Tell me quick. <laughs> Guess.、Uh, Norway. Right, first time、oh, high up in the mountains, above a small village. So we have work to do, you and I. We have a great task ahead of us. Thank heavens, you are a mouse. A mouse can go anywhere. Yes, no one will ever see me. Moving about in a big castle will be child's play compared with going into a crowded kitchen full of cooks and waiters. Oh, you could spend days there if necessary, or you could spend weeks in that castle if you wanted to, and they'd never know you were there. I myself would get a room in the village, and you could sneak out of the castle and have supper with me every night and tell me what was going on. I could. I could, but your main job, of course, would be to destroy every witch in the place. That really would be the end of the whole organization. Me, destroy them? <laughs> How could I do that? Mouse maker. Formula eighty six. Delayed action mouse maker. All over again.、Hmm? You do remember the recipe, don't you? Every bit of it. 
You mean we're going to make it ourselves? Why not? If they can make it, so can we. Um, who's going to climb up the tall trees to get the Gruntle's eggs? I will. There's plenty of life in this old dog yet. Yes, I think I'd better do that part of it, Grandma. No, 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 just details. And what happens after the new Grand High Witch and everyone else in the castle have been turned into mice? The castle will be completely empty. I shall come and join you and... Uh, wait. <laughs> I've just had a nasty thought. When the mouse maker turned me into a mouse, I didn't become just an ordinary mouse that you could catch with a mouse trap. I became a talking, thinking, intelligent mouse person who wouldn't go near a mouse trap. If we use the mouse maker to turn the new Grand High Witch and all the other witches in the castle into mice, the whole place will be swarming with very clever, very nasty, very dangerous, talking, thinking mouse witches. And that could be very horrible indeed. By golly, you're right. A Grand High Witch is bad enough when she's disguised as a lady. But just think what she could do if she were a mouse. She could go anywhere. Ha! I've got it. I've got the answer. The answer is cats. Bring on the cats! Ha <laughs> ha! It's brilliant! Absolutely brilliant! Shove half a dozen cats into the castle and they'll kill every mouse in the place in five minutes. I don't care how clever they are. <laughs> ah, yeah, just one thing. You've got to make absolutely sure I'm well out of the way before you put the cats in. <laughs> That's a promise. What shall we do after the cats have killed all the mice? We shall go through the records and get the names and addresses of all the witches in the whole wide world. And, and after that? After that, my darling, the greatest task of all will begin for you and me. We shall pack our bags and go travelling all over the world and seek out the houses where the witches are living. Then you will creep inside and leave your little drops of deadly mouse maker in whatever food you see lying about. It will be a triumph, my darling. <laughs> that will be our work for the rest of our lives. Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> We're going to be busy these next few weeks and months and years. But what fun and excitement it's going to be. You can say that again. I can't wait to get started. <laughs>